In today's show, without Damian Lillard, without Yusuf Nurkic, and without a problem, the Blazers go into New Orleans and handle, handle the Pelicans. They're making a case for being the best team in the Western Conference right now. Welcome Locked On Blazers. Let's get into it. You are Locked On Trail Blazers, your daily Portland Trail Blazers podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What up, world? It's your past first point guard and trailblazers reporter, Mike Richmond. You're listening to another episode of Locked on Blazers, part of the Locked on Podcast Network, available wherever you get podcasts and also on YouTube. Thanks for making this show your first listen every single day, five days a week, free on all platforms, the only daily trailblazers podcast. So why not listen? start your day listening to this show? It's your team every day right here on Locked on Blazers. What? What? What in the heck, y'all? This was another one that you could point to as the Blazers' best win of the year. It's just what they do. Every night out, they get their best win of the year. They go into New Orleans and win 106-95 against the Pelicans. There is just too much to talk about in this game, so we're going to get all, we're going to cover it from every angle. No Damian Lillard, no Yusuf Nurkic, Shaden Sharp missed this game. Keon Johnson's still not back. And what do they do? They handle him. Let's go fastest recap in the West. Let's do what we do. The Blazers and Pelicans tied at 27 after one. Jeremy Grant kept the Blazers in this game early. He had 11 in the first quarter. Uh, Pels take the lead in the second quarter. Blazers came out with kind of a funky lineup to open the quarter. Couldn't get going, and the Pelicans kind of seized control of, of what was mostly a back-and-forth game. They lead by six at the break. Then, Anthony Simons, who started slow, just one for eight from the field, erupts for 13 in the third quarter, and the Blazers take a 78-74 lead into the fourth quarter, and then they just put their foot on the gas and cruise in this one. Jeremy Grant scores 10 of his team-high 27 in the fourth quarter, and Portland wins 106-95 going away. They took a 10-point lead. Just under eight minutes left. And then an emphatic Jeremy Grant dunk with just under five minutes left when he put Zion Williamson on skates was all you needed. This game was over. And after the Blazers had played a bunch of close games against teams that seemingly had more talent than them or teams about on their level, this one didn't come down to that. There was no final possession heroics. This was just a straight-up impressive win on the road, which means we got to give out an impressive performance. Hit it, Shania. That don't impress me. Shania Twain's lying. <laughs> Shania Twain's lying. She doesn't know. This was so impressive. Jeremy Grant finishes with 27 points to go with eight rebounds and four assists, four steals. The Blazers turned the ball over just eight times. Jeremy Grant was incredible. The team was incredible. They gave up just 38 points in the second half, 17 in the third, and then 21 in the fourth. New Orleans had no way to score. And they couldn't stop the Blazers giving up 55 in the second half. Jeremy Grant is your most impressive performance of the night, but this is everybody. It's why I mentioned the turnovers, a collective effort. It's why I mentioned the defense, a collective effort. Josh Hart, 17-7 and against his former team. Anthony Simons, 23-13 in the third quarter, helped the Blazers take the lead for good. Nazir Little came off the bench and had 15. The Blazers played just eight guys. Because Damon Lillard, dealing with a calf injury that caused him to miss four games. The Blazers, he was a late scratch. He was, a, he was on the injury report. Um... As questionable, and then he was ruled out prior to this one, or or in the afternoon, you know, at the afternoon injury report when they have to release it. Uh, so you don't have Dane. Yusuf Nurkic still dealing with that groin injury. He's missed back-to-back games. Keon Johnson still dealing with a hip injury. He missed back-to-back games. And Shaden Sharp, who was listed as probable with a finger sprain, he was ruled out of this game. So you have to you start Amphrey Simons, you start Josh Hart, Justice Winslow, Jeremy Grant, and Drew Eubanks against a fully healthy, ready to ride. Uh, not fully healthy. They, they got a couple guys in the injury report, but th- their big guns in there. Brandon Ingram in there. Zion Williamson in there. Jonas Valanciunas in there. Herb Jones. CJ McCollum. The, you know, the young parts off the bench that people love, like Jose Alvarado and Trey Murphy. You had you had Larry Nance. The full complement of dudes. They could not handle this Blazer team. They had no chance. Zion Williamson had 29. They basically ran all of their offense through him down the stretch, and he was really good in the fourth quarter, but it didn't matter. Brandon Ingram fouled out after just 31 minutes. He was a non-factor in this game. He had 14 points. CJ McCollum, 13 on 16 of 17 shootings. CJ McCollum had 14 missed field goals and 13 points. Josh Hart went 7 of 13 from the floor. Um, Somewhere, a local radio... (laughs) 
a local radio personality thinks Josh Hart is bad. Uh, th- th- Trey Murphy, 16 off the bench for the Pelicans. That's your fastest recap in the West. I've actually already done the fastest recap in the West. I just didn't give it to you. Uh, t- I am running out of superlatives for this team. Uh, yesterday's show, I said, this team is for real. This is why it's sustainable. The, you know, the defense looks real and they're not overperforming. Then they come out here without Damian Lillard, without Nurk, and you say, all right, literally, if they lose this game, it's not like, it's not even that big of a deal. It wouldn't be super meaningful. I wouldn't come, like, I'm obviously jazzed up right now after watching this game because it's so impressive, but like, like, I wasn't gonna, I wasn't gonna kill them for losing this game. I wasn't even, like, even if they got blown out, it was like, yeah, I mean, second night of a back-to-back without your dudes. Sometimes it happens. Like, Pelicans are at least in theory, at least according to all the pundits who jumped on the bandwagon, a good basketball team. You know, it looks better than them right now is your Portland Trailblazers. They, they roll in this game, roll in this game. The, the Pelicans had, the Pelicans were in position to have, it was a close game in the second quarter. Uh, A foul at the end of halftime, Justin Winslow fouls Trey Murphy on a three. It's a six point game. Should have been a three point game, right? But like the Pelicans had opportunities. They couldn't seize them. And then once the Blazers kind of figured out what they wanted to do on both ends, I thought Portland's zone in the first five minutes was really shaky. It was a, they're playing a lot. They play a ton of zone, but they're playing a, even more zone in this game because the Pelicans don't shoot threes. It's like, uh, I thought it was shaky. Giving up easy buckets, kind of just like miscommunications. I thought Ant and Drew Eubanks had a couple where they're supposed to pass off inside to the guy at the nail, and they just like, it didn't look good. First, first sub for fi- first five minutes, it's not looking good. Pelicans had a chance to be up bigger in the first half because because Portland was they weren't bad like I don't I don't I don't think Portland was bad they just they were struggling a little bit from the outside couldn't make any shots the Blazers shot just six of twenty from three in the first half and 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 New Orleans did not have a bigger lead and then you get that third quarter where the Blazers outscored the Pelicans 27-17. 17 points in the third quarter Pelicans can't make anything they shot thirty eight percent in the second half couldn't make anything and then. You're up four in the third quarter, but you're on the road. They've had a bad quarter. It's like, it's, you need, you want to see, if you're the Blazers, you just want to be competitive. You know, it's like, you're at a point where it's just like, hey, you've played so well through three quarters. Just don't, just don't go away. And they didn't just, they did not go away. They didn't give up anything. They didn't give up anything. This was, this never tilted back. The Bla- the Pelicans got as close as one. And then all of a sudden it was a 10 point game in the 10 point game when, when Nazir Little drives left and gets an and one with just under eight minutes, it's a 10 point game. And then when, when Jeremy Grant, ISOs at the top, just inside the top of the key, he's got Zion Williamson on with the clock ticking under five minutes. He hits him with a, a cross to his cross to his right hand. Zion's still there, crosses back to his left hand, and Zion fully opens his hips. No chance on skates. See you later, Oksana Bayal. Peace. Jeremy Grant streaks down the lane, dunks. See you later. That's why Shania was lying. This was impressive and fun. That bucket from Jeremy Grant, with just under five minutes left, that's that's like the one you'll remember because it's the highlight, but it also put the Blazers up 11. They never relinquished the lead in that fourth quarter. That put the Blazers up 11 and that was it. Like the Pelicans, you know, maybe were vaguely in it after that, but ball game. I mean, the real icing was a three from, or a little turnaround jumper at the, at the uh, baseline or at the foul line rather from Josh Hart with under two minutes left. That was like, you got no chance. See you later. Y'all traded for, y'all traded me for the other guy. But this game was just, if all of the other games have been sort of like proof of concept, right? This team can defend. This team's got depth. This was the emphatic one. Like, you know, you win a bunch of close games. It's like, yeah, you put yourself in the right position, but you're just not going to win a bunch of games on buzzer beaters. This wasn't that. This was the, if all of the other games were sort of building in this direction, this was the one that stamps the Blazers as real deal holy field. I know I said that they were it was sustainable and I thought they were for real in the last episode. This one just it drives home everything I said in that last one. This there's so much to love. I got more from this game I want to talk about. Every Simons had every Simons did not make a two pointer. I thought it was the best game driving to the rim all night. I want to talk about that. Nazir Little had 13 of his 15 in the second half. A wonderful night from Nas. And I think Chauncey Billups just had another absolute heater coaching. I want to talk about all the adjustments or all the sort of um, things that Chauncey went to that gave the Blazers this win. But first. Before we get there, I got to tell y'all, this episode is brought to you by 
bet online the fastest and easiest way to bet on all of your sports action whatever it might be if you want to bet on the Blazers they're going to win the rest of their games the rest of the year this is 79 and 3 team the greatest team in the history of the of the sport I don't think that but I think they're actually legitimately good and I think you can win some money betting on them when they get shorted because they're they play they punch above their weight every time every every time this year they've had a chance to punch a bunch above their weight they basically have except the second night of a back to back in Phoenix they've been great um they've just been they've just been excellent uh you know came back from down 17 but the odds make don't know about that Memphis game. Bet online doesn't just have basketball. You can bet on college football. You can bet on uh, NFL football and whatever sport your little heart desires. You're going to find it on betonline.net. So don't wait. Go take advantage today. That's bet online where the game starts. All right. Look, even my ad read was a little excited there. I'm getting riled up about this basketball team because they were fantastic tonight. I mentioned Anthony Simons. The Blazers won this game on Jeremy Grant's back. And they won this game on great defense. We'll talk about that in a moment. But Anthony Simon started this game 1 of 8. I mentioned how bad the Blazers shot. 6 of 20 in the first half from 3. Door was open. The Pelicans couldn't couldn't bust through it. No Kool-Aid man for them. Like, this, this was a game where you, you knew you were going to need Ant to be good, right? No Dame. He's your best shot creator. I mean, Jeremy Grant could go get a bucket, but he's not like, he doesn't have the playmaking and... Um, at playmaking and scoring chops, right? Like if you give the ball to Jeremy, he's going to shoot it. And he's good at it. He hit 27. On, on 10 of 20 shooting, hit four threes. Like, and he was good early, right? Like he had 11 in the first quarter. Um, they needed him to get going, but you knew you were going to need a big Ant night. Ant starts one of eight from the floor. It's just a brutal, brutal start to the game. You know what he did that I love? He started attacking the rim. He had one in the second quarter where he got an offensive rebound on the baseline and went right back up with two hands and tried to cram, tried to dunk on Jonas Valanciunas. I think Jonas might have blocked that clean, but Jer- but Amphrey Simons gets the benefit of the doubt because he went up hard with two hands and he was higher than Jonas and you just get the benefit of the doubt when you go to the rim strong. It is something that Amphrey Simons does not do enough but he did it in this game. Then right opening of the third quarter, again, tried to cram on someone and got fouled. Again, attacks that front line, attacks Valanciunas, attacks Brandon Ingram, and draws a foul. Then again, a second time in the third quarter, gets himself to the rim and draws more shooting fouls. Amphrey Simons ended up taking eight free throws in this game. Brandon Ingram took zero. CJ McCollum took zero. Amphrey Simons took eight. Uh, If you're scoring at home, that's either eight more. If you're doing it by multiplications, infinitely more free throws than CJ McCollum took in this game. Uh, listen, Ant, because he started going to the rim, getting fouled, getting, you know, seeing the, seeing free throws go in and getting some, getting some, getting some literally unguarded shot attempts, he got himself going. And then he has this monster third quarter where he has 13 of the third quarter and the Blazers go from down six to up four and they never look back. Ant was great. He did not make a two-pointer in this game. He was 5 of 13 from three. I think that's a great number of threes for him to shoot. He was 0 for 5 inside the line. But that that number is like, oh, 0 over, over, over for 5 on twos. It does not show you the shooting possessions he had where he gets to the free throw line because he attacked and tried to dunk on fools. That is the next evolution of Anthony Simons. I don't know that he can do that all the time. Like, obviously, it was like something that he was like specifically focused on after a slow start in this game. I don't think that's coaching at all. I think that's Amphrey Simons being like, I got to get going and we need these dudes need me. I need to be better. Gets himself, you know, a little bit of contact. You, you know, it's a normal sort of basketball thing. You start to feel that contact, start to feel that aggression. You're like, okay, I'm going to give it to him then. Got himself going, had a monster third quarter. We hit three threes. Ant's best attacking game of the season. Nazir Little, I talked about him in a, a mailbag show. Everyone's like, how's Nazir Little going to get more minutes or why doesn't he play more? This is how you earn your minutes. A night when you're shorthanded. Nas was going to play a bunch. Uh, Chauncey Billups basically played seven guys in this game. Uh, he played eight, but Jabari Walker only played eight minutes um, and he did not really, um, he did not get a long burn in the second half. He, um, he, <laughs> he, he kind of, um, you know, he, he, what he play? He had played six and a half minutes in the in the first half. He, he got ninety seconds in the second half. Like he just he wasn't good, uh, and they had to go with Chauncey wants to win the game. He's he said it before. I I'm coaching to win. He pl- basically played seven guys, the dudes you trust. One of those dudes you trust is Nazir Little, and Nazir Little earned those minutes. He was excellent. I talked about it before. It's like the opportunity will not be a lengthy visitor for Nas. This was an opportunity with the shorthanded team with the, with the group they had. Nas went and got it. Finished fifteen point six of eleven shooting four boards in 24 minutes um 
it was the how he did it for me. Uh, you know, he, he got going, he had a, he hit a huge late clock three in the first half, but then he started to attack and he started to attack, um, in the way that he is capable of. He is a great straight line driver. The one that really stands out is he has, you know, he has back to back buckets in the, in the, uh, when he, he had 15, he scored 13 in the second half, eight in the fourth quarter, as the Blazers said, no, we are not going to go away. You cut it. You cut a four point lead to one. We are not going away. We're going to win this basketball game. Nazir has a dunk, um, uh, like driving in space to put them up nine with 840 left, 837 on the clock. Then the next possession, he has an and one where they, they get an offensive rebound. It kicks out to him. He has the ball in his left hand with with uh, CJ McCollum on him at the top of the key. Barbecue chicken. Nas doesn't have a lot of wiggle. He's not going to cross, cross, spin. Like he's not going to put Zion Williamson on skates like Jeremy Grant did dunking through four, you know, Red Seas part and dunks on him. That wasn't it. <laughs> this is Nas saying, I'm one of the best straight line drivers in the league, but I need straight line drives to make it happen. You're going to let me go left? There's no way you can guard me. B- blows past CJ McCollum with his left hand, dunks and one, and puts the Blazers up 10. 89 79. That was, that was them seizing full control of this game after it kind of looked a little bit dicey, right? Like this was, that was an emphatic moment. Then Jeremy Grant brings him home. Um, poor Zion Williamson, you're going to see that highlight a lot, my dude. Uh, but Nas, he's, he's become a bomber, right? Like uh, more than half of his attempts were from three. He took three threes tonight and eight two pointers. Plus he got fouled a couple times. So probably more, more shooting possessions inside the arc. He ended up taking three free throws. One of those was an and one, uh, like it's, he just was aggressive in the way you need him to be aggressive. And he didn't just settle for three pointers. He can really shoot it. He can really shoot it. Only made one of three tonight, but like he's, he has really been hitting him early in the game, but to, to the best version of Nas is someone who slashes and gets himself to the paint. And that's how he got himself going. The last thing to love is so much to love. It's like no, notebook is overfilling. I got the double notebook here. It's so overfilling so much. I'll even, I'll prove it to you if you're watching on YouTube, got both notebooks out. Uh, <laughs> That's an upstairs notebook and a basement notebook. I had too many notes for this game. But Chauncey Billups coached his dang butt off in this game. But Chauncey's been great to this season. Uh, and if you listen to the podcast, I've been consistent in giving him credit. He's been great. This was a great game from Chauncey Billups. Blazers came out and played zone right away. Literally the first possession of the game. They knew what they were going to do. This was um, They were confident in their plan of action. Pelicans are not a good shooting team, and they're not a frequent shooting team. They crush teams at the, the rim. They have the highest rim frequency in the league in the half court. Nobody gets more shots at the rim in the half court than them. They take a lot of twos because they got Brandon Ingram and, and CJ McCollum, but they're a rim team. Like, with Jonas and um, and obviously Zion, like, they're a team that's going to go inside and try to beat you up down there. They, they scored 115 points last night. They made three three-pointers. Uh, last night being against the Chicago Bulls. So you might be listening to this when last night this, this game in, in New Orleans. But, like... They're a rim team. The Blazers knew they were going to play zone. Chauncey showed the zone. Early, it was looking rough. I thought, like I mentioned up top, like I thought Amphrey Simons and Drew Eubanks had three different ones where they weren't communicating and they just give up a, a runway to someone inside. But then they got it together. They really did. And the defense was so much better. Like I mentioned, thir- 38 points after halftime, under 40% shooting after halftime. They, and they're forcing a boatload of turnovers. Like the, the Blazers haven't always been a high turnover team this year, but they force 17 turnovers, commit just eight of their own. They're, this is how you win if you're undermanned, is you you make sure you end up with more shots. The Blazers took six more free throws and six more field goals. That's that's the recipe for victory. And a lot of it had to do with Chauncey Billups' own defense. That worked really well. It worked really well. He also went small. Trent and Watford was Excellent in this game. Uh, his box score is pretty underwhelming, to be quite honest. One of three, two points, six rebounds, four assists, committed two of the Blazers' eight turnovers. He did come away with three steals, including one where he flopped, got up off the floor and stole the ball. One of my favorite plays of the season. Um, but like, Trendon's defense just... I'm going to make it a little harder on Zion Williamson was fantastic. Trendon's just connectivity playmaking. Like he doesn't, you know, he finished with the four assists, but just as a connector on offense is so special. He had, um, you know, he was, he was helping on the glass. He was allowing them to play small and be competitive. And he was getting in passing lanes and making it happen. Like he was really good. And, and the willingness to go small and stay small was, was really smart from, from uh, Chauncey Billups. 
the zone worked and he knew it. For, he literally played in the first possession of the game. He knew what he wanted to do and he stuck with it even when they struggled. That's good coaching. Know what you want to do. We've given Chauncey Billups a lot for changing up his defenses. I'll give him credit here for just being like, this is going to work. The other thing that, so they, the way they treated Zion on both ends, I thought was really good. They didn't really double team him. There is, um, Zion is so fast, particularly getting to his left hand. He's so quick off the ground that there is this, there is this, urge to send help to him but if you send help he's not a great passer but he can pass out of double teams if you send help particularly slow he'll just see it and then the ball swings around and they're harder to guard and then you're caught scrambling what Chauncey did is he trusted Drew Eubanks and he trusted uh, Trenton Watford for the most part to guard to guard Zion straight up not send double teams not dig down in the post like just guard him straight up make him shoot over the top make him score through contact be physical with him even when Justice Winslow was on him be physical with him like play him play him tough and and make him earn his points and let's not give up three pointers let's not give up open jumpers let's not get every, let's not get anybody else rolling if Zion wants to score 40 we'll lose he only scored 20 he only scored 29 they won and he wasn't super efficient in this game he finished uh he finished 9 of 14 from the floor but like that belies how much he struggled he 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 like he couldn't get shots up. He he had to pass out of he had to pass out of situations where he where he did not have an advantage. And quite frankly, it's the just number of field goal attempts. If Zion's going to take a kajillion, you're going to live with it. They did a good because you don't double Zion, you stay home on Brandon Ingram. Really wonderful coaching from Chauncey Billups. You know what they did on the other end? They went at Zion every time they could. Make him guard because the because the Pelicans were struggling on offense. Just couldn't get it going. Turn the ball over all these things, they decided to go small. They played Zion down the five and basically ran all of their offense through him down the stretch. But, but like, um, they, they needed to go small because they could not score with the larger lineups on the court. They just, they needed to open the paint. They needed to, to try to bust the zone with more shooters, more ball handlers, all of those things, right? So they went small and they couldn't stop the Blazers. They could not get a stop to get themselves back in the game. And part of that was because Chauncey Billups said, every time down, let's make Zion guard. Put him in the action. The Pelicans started scrambling away from that, trying to switch pre-switch pick and roll so Zion wasn't the dance partner. The Blazers went at him. Chauncey Billups coached his dang butt off in this game. And I thought the way they approached Zion on both ends really spoke to it. Coaching is funny, right? I thought Chauncey Billups had two excellent Excellent ATOs that I love. They're both ghost screens for Amphrey Simons, which is when Simons comes up, uh, is when handling the ball was uh, was Justice Winslow both times. And they bring up, like, uh, Simons starts on the baseline. They set a pin down for him, which is a screen facing the baseline, so he can come up towards the ball. And it's like he's going to run a pick and roll, but he doesn't even set the screen. There's no contact. He just kind of flashes like he's going to set the screen and then keeps it moving. It's what I call a ghost screen. I think there's some other some other names for it. Lamar Hurd used another term for it on the broadcast. Uh, Lamar, text me. Tell me what you call it. Uh, but it's go, ghost screen. Just bring your man into the action and fade out. One time, every time has got a got a. It was a ghost screen into a hand, dribble handoff, wide open corner with Trenton Watford. Trenton Watford traveled. They had to give the ball back. Beautiful play, right? The next time they ran it uh, in, in the second half, ghost screen heading in the other direction. Every time it's got a wide open look at a three and, and clanged it. Those are like awesome ATOs from Chauncey. Beautiful stuff. And they don't work. One of them is a turnover. The other one is a brick. It's like it doesn't, that doesn't show up. Like it's not going to show up on his highlight reel. No sizzle reel there for Billups. Great plays. They were, they were just straight up great plays. He, he had a great game. And having your guys committed to the plan, playing their butts off and be undermanned and play, and beating a team at full strength on the road, second night of a back to back to improve to four and one on the road trip. Hats off to Billups. Hats off to Joe Cronin. Hats off to the guys. This was, more proof of the collective success of this whole dang franchise in the first 12 games of the season. It's why they're 9-3, and three, and it's why I think they're the best team in the Western Conference. Apologies to whatever they're doing out there in Salt Lake City. I think your Portland Trailblazers is the best team in the Western Conference. Let's talk about that. The best team in the West, for real. In the third segment. Join me there, won't you? Still a pass, first point guard. Still Mike Richmond. You're still listening to Locked on Blazers. The home 
for the best team in the Western Conference. Right now, today, as I'm recording this episode, all the games have ended on Thursday night. The Blazers sit alone in second place in the standings. They are 9-3, a half game back of the 10-3 and three Utah Jazz. The Blazers do not have the point differential of the Phoenix Suns. They don't even have the point di- differential of the Jazz. They don't even have as good a point differential as the team they just beat, the New Orleans Pelicans. But you cannot tell me that the Blazers aren't at least in the conversation as the best team in the Western Conference. Look who's there with them. Phoenix. The Blazers beat them two out of three times, including one game without Ants or uh, Damon Lillard. You can't tell me Phoenix is head and shoulders above, above Portland. You know, they might statistically look like it, but we've seen them play, y'all. We've seen them play. Uh, they're... Blazers haven't played Denver yet. They lost a close game to Memphis uh, without Damian Lillard when they were down big and came all the way back and just didn't have a workout. I would say Denver Denver and Memphis, you could make a compelling case. Utah's playing so dang well. Um, but they haven't had the same injury troubles that the Blazers have had. Uh, they rested Mike Conley a, a little bit, and they had a, Colin Sexton miss a little bit of time. But the Blazers, Damian Lillard's missed five of their first 13 games. Or five of their first 12, excuse me. And they're 9-3. and three. They're three and two without Dame. <laughs> like, you can't tell me that this team doesn't look like the best team in the Western Conference or at least have a case for it. All of the other teams behind the Blazers in the standings. So I think Phoenix, like, again, profiles has it, but they beat the Blazers two out of three. I think you can make a case for Denver, but, um, you know, Blazers have a slightly better point differential and they're basically the same record. Nuggets are eight and three. Uh, Memphis is eight and four. They don't have the same point differential. The, they did bleed the Blazers head-to-head, sure. We could talk about that, right? Like, they're in the mix. Utah's in the mix for sure. Portland's playing better than the Los Angeles Clippers. P- Portland's playing better than the Dallas Mavericks. Portland just straight up handled New Orleans at home, at full strength, no problem. San Antonio, no. Minnesota, that's not even a good basketball team. Sacramento, no. Golden State, at some point, probably will be very good, but they're not good right now. The Thunder are bad. The Rockets are bad. The Lakers are bad. Portland has a real legitimate case to the best team in the West. And they're leaving some points out on the board for you. Portland, according to cleaningtheglass.com, after the games have ended tonight, is just are just 17th in offense. That's points scored per 100 possessions on offense. Just 17th. Every Simon still not has has still not found a consistent rhythm. Damon Lillard still has not uh, just like hasn't been in the lineup enough. And and in fact, the last game. Um, Last game was excellent, but the game before that, he looked looked a little bit rusty, like a guy coming off injury. They still haven't they they haven't found their offensive groove yet, and they're thirtieth in the league in turnovers. They just give a, they just give away points where they just don't even get it, give away opportunities where they don't even get shots up. They turn the ball over a little bit less. Dame plays more. Anthony Simon shoots something more like what his career average is from deep. It's a better offensive team. And Portland is real deal Holyfield on defense. As real as penitentiary steel. They're seventh on defense according to Cleaning the Glass. The seventh best defense in the NBA through 12 games. No, I did not think that was going to happen. No, I didn't. I don't try to... I'm not a big... Like, I'm not going to bloviate on this podcast. I, I say silly stuff. I'm goofy or whatever. But, like, I try to be honest about my evolving feelings on the of the Portland Trailblazers. And yesterday's show, I said, this thing is sustainable. I come out watching this team, and I look at the rest of the West, and I say, there is no reason the Blazers, you couldn't make the case that the Blazers are the best team in the Western Conference. There's no reason you couldn't. The only reason you couldn't is because you haven't watched them play. Plenty of people will do power rankings next week when they haven't watched the Blazers play. The games happen late at night. Maybe this trip to the uh, central time zone will help a little bit. Dallas and New Orleans, you could stay up late and watch those. Uh, but like, re- I don't know if this is the best team. Like, I don't think this is the best team in the NBA. I think that's still Milwaukee. Uh, Cleveland has dropped two in a row, but they're really good too. But like, I think you can make a case that this is the best team in the Western Conference or is playing the best basketball of anyone in the West right now. Long way to go. All those silly caveats, whatever, whatever. But like, this team is... You can't look at, at at Utah or Phoenix or Denver or Memphis and say, oh, well, the Blazers just aren't on their level. If you think that they're a, a tier or a half tier below, sure, maybe you could convince me, but it ain't that far. And we have enough evidence early in the season that the Blazers are not that far away from what Memphis has, and they've beaten Phoenix a couple times already. Still, this team is serious. 
And I think one of the things that is common in when a team plays well is you want to have a simple explanation. And typically, the simple explanation is the easiest. I'm an Occam's razor person, but typically they're the easiest, right? But I think it's, I think a simple explanation is okay, but having it be a binary is not. The Blazers are winning, yes, because Cho Cronin built an excellent roster of versatile athletic wings that complement what they want to do. The Blazers are winning because, yes, Chauncey Billups is showing himself to be a very good coach, motivating a team to play defense and getting them to be just good enough to on offense and getting the most out of shorthanded rosters for at least two very impressive wins in Phoenix and New Orleans so far, and, and, and maybe you could throw a couple more in there too. Yes, Chauncey Billups has been great. Yes, Joe Cronin did a great job. And yes, Damian Lord was excellent earlier in the season when the Blazers needed him to be excellent. And yes, Jeremy Grant has been excellent. But no one player or no like magic leadership wand from Dame has been the answer. The team likes each other and they play, they play together and they play hard. It is hard to know sometimes if the if the sum will be greater than its parts. And the Blazers are that. And they deserve credit. The players deserve credit. The coaching deserves credit. The front office deserves credit. This is synergy from everybody. You, What I'm saying is why it's not a binary. No one group deserves this credit. And the, the, it, here's the reason why. All of them are reasons why. Joe Cronin deserves it. Billups deserves it. The players deserve it. Dame deserves it. Uh, young guys like Jabari Walker and Shaden Sharp deserve credit for, for being ready. Jeremy Grant deserves credit. Josh Hart deserves credit for being a monster. Justice Winslow, Trenton Watford, like up and down the roster throughout the front office, pretty much everybody in the building deserves credit for how they've been. They're just so darn good and so darn fun. I can't believe I keep doing these podcasts. <laughs> I can't believe I get to sit here and be excited and laugh and be be silly about all this, like about a, a legitimately very good basketball team. No way to slice it. This is a good basketball team, maybe even a very good basketball team. And it's certainly, certainly, if you were talking about best teams in the Western Conference this weekend, this is Friday, November 11th show. If you were talking about best teams in the Western Conference this weekend with your pals, they better min- mention those fighting pinwheels. Isolated up here in the Pacific Northwest because this team is ballin'. They close out a six-gamer against the Dallas Mavericks who have lost two in a row after they were looking like they had figured it out. Dallas cannot score in the fourth quarter. The Blazers are really good down the stretch. This is a winnable basketball game, a chance to go in probably 5-1 and one on a six-game road trip. You better believe I will be both hooting and hollering <laughs> on the next show after that de- after that Mavericks game if they win. Regardless, I'll have a show because it's five days a week and available wherever you get podcasts. The only Daily Trailblazers podcast. It's available on all platforms. Make your first listen every day. Make your second listen Locked on Sports Today, the 22-minute program covering all of the biggest stories across all of your major sports. They're going to have me on Locked on Sports Today soon because this is a big story brewing in the Northwest. This team's really fun. Enjoy it. Hold tightly to it. How about it? How about it? 12 games in, 9-3. and three. They're just straight up excellent. Enjoy this one, y'all. Come back and listen soon. I appreciate you. I'll talk to you soon.